Uh, Malaysia's latest leading indicators performance uh, suggests uh, further improvement of the overall economy. Uh, with the forthcoming performance, uh, the year-to-date growth is strong at 5.2%, and this is well within our projection of between 4.8 to 5.3%. And moving into 2025, we expect growth to expand between 4.5 to 5.5%. Uh, and this is supported by household spending, which will remain uh, the anchor of growth, driven by expansion in employment and income, as well as continued uh, policy support. Uh, furthermore, investment activities will continue to support growth amid the ongoing progress in multi-year projects, realization of the high approved investments, and the favorable financing conditions. And on the external front, higher exports and tourist spending will also continue to lift growth. The growth outlook, however, remains subject to risk from both external and domestic factors. And downside risk could stem from weaker than expected external demand from key export partners, further escalation of geopolitical conflicts and more protectionist policies, as well as lower than expected commodity production. On the other hand, growth could be higher due to greater spillovers from the global technology upcycle and more robust tourism industry. In addition, a faster implementation of existing and new investment projects could also lead to more robust investment activity and the overall growth in the economy. Malaysia's trade performance in the third quarter remains highly encouraging. Uh, gross exports grew by 7.8% and this is driven by continued external demand and the global tech upcycle. These are evident from the sustained growth of E&E &E and non-E&E exports by 5.2% and 10% respectively. And we project export growth to sustain, arising from the global tech up cycle and the continued strong demand for our non-E&E goods. At the same time, gross imports expanded at a faster rate of 20.8%, contributed by increased imports of capital and intermediate goods. And going forward, we expect imports to remain strong, and this is driven by capital imports from investment side up cycle and intermediate imports to support higher exports in the future. <clears throat> Importantly, these investments will further raise exports and expand the productive capacity of the economy. Consumer spending remains as the anchor of growth, and this is supported by the continued wage increases and employment growth. And moving forward, household spending is projected to remain resilient, lifted by rising income, expanding employment opportunities, along with targeted policy initiatives to support selected households. The investment up cycle is a key bright spot in the economy. Overall investment registered a higher growth of 15.3%, if you look at the second quarter this year, as at 15.5%. And this is supported by both structures and machinery and equipment. The continued implementation of new and existing projects is reflected in the higher construction activities uh, mainly in the private sector during the quarter. Investments are also supported by the good implementation progress of key infrastructure projects such as the ECRL and the Pan Borneo Highway. To further support investment activity, I am pleased to announce the globalization of the foreign exchange policy to better facilitate greater participation from global investors in key growth areas in Malaysia. And this is in line with the greater demand and interest by international financial institutions to finance the high-value investment projects in Malaysia that we have observed in the recent period. With the liberalization, multilateral development banks and qualified non-resident development financial institutions are now free to issue ringgit-denominated bonds and sukuk for use in Malaysia and to provide ringgit financing to resident entities. Now let me turn to inflation. Both headline and core inflation remain stable at 1.9% in the third quarter. While there were pockets of higher inflation for selected items such as diesel and vehicle insurance, this was offset by broader moderation uh, for food and beverages inflation during the quarter. Of note, the stable underlying inflation during the quarter 
continues to suggest limited spillover to broader prices from the diesel subsidy rationalization that was implemented in June, which we largely attribute to effective enforcement and mitigation measures to minimize the cost impact on businesses. Year to date, both headline and core inflation averaged 1.8% and are expected to remain a modest for the remainder of the year. For 2025, Inflation is projected to average between 2% to 3.5%, accounting for impending domestic policy measures announced in Budget 2025, including the implementation of targeted RON95 subsidies and the expanded scope of the SST. Upside risk to the outlook remains contingent on the extent of spillovers from further domestic policy measures to the broader prices, as well as lingering risks from external developments which could drive up global commodity prices or disrupt global supply conditions. On the downside, lower domestic inflation uh, could result from the weaker than expected global growth, which could weigh on global commodity prices and domestic economic conditions through weaker external demand. The banking system continued to play an important role in supporting economic growth during the quarter. Owing to their strong financial position, including the robust levels of capital and healthy liquidity buffers, banks remain well positioned to support the financing needs of the domestic economy. In summary, the Malaysian economy expanded by 5.3% in third quarter of this year, driven mainly by stronger private expenditure and further recovery in exports. The growth prospects in 2025 remain positive although they are raised to the outlook from both the external and domestic factors. Meanwhile, headline inflation is expected to average between 2% and 3.5% in 2025. And with that, my team and I, as well as Dr. Uze and his team, will be happy to take questions from the media. Thank you very much. Everyone.